Butters, your host of the Show Up Sister podcast. I am so thankful that you are taking some of your time to listen to today's conversation. In this episode, we are actually beginning a mini series on the podcast under the topic of hosting. There are so many different ways that we can be the hostess with the mostess. And in today's talk, we are specifically going to be covering the lies that we often tell ourselves about hosting and then pair them with truth. I don't know about you, but there are often times where when I think about hosting, I get overwhelmed at just the idea of having people over. But no fear, we're going to dive in to all of that today. I just felt like the Lord kept pushing and impressing on my heart that this summer is going to be a summer of community, a summer of gathering, a summer of hosting, and I'm really excited to equip you guys with your own tips for hosting. Um, I just really felt like God was saying, you know, a lot of us have lost the art of gathering, and I really want to bring resources on how to foster community in your heart and in your home and be be there for people, even when we might not understand what they're going through, but just providing them a safe space to live life and go through it with you. So we're going to dive into the goodies and the good conversations that's prepared for today. And yeah, let's head into lie number one. We have to host gatherings at our home or in our personal space. Do you ever feel like hosting means that the event or gathering has to take place at your house? Often, the location of gathering can hold us back from hosting because we compare our space to all the ones we see online or friends' houses or we just get nervous about inviting people into our personal space. First off, let's leave that lie behind because if the Lord has blessed you with a space to live in, it is the perfect space to host and gather in community. Maybe the idea of cleaning your entire home for guests is what is stressing you out and holds you back from inviting others over. Well, no fear, girlfriend. I completely understand. I think it's important to take those responsibilities and tasks and divide them up over time instead of trying to just rush and do them all the day before you're expecting company. But what if I told you that you could actually host outside of your home? What if hosting can look as simple as inviting your friend out for coffee at your favorite coffee shop or getting a group of ladies together to go out for lunch? A host is a gatherer. And I don't know if you know this, but us as females tend to be more of a gatherer type. The stereotype of the hunters and the gatherers stands true in most of these scenarios and cases. We tend to want people to come in. We tend to want to feed our people, um, make them feel at home and hospitable. And when this isn't a natural inkling for someone, it can be really discouraging. But getting that group of friends together outside of your house shows that you are a natural host, naturally in an an initiator and you thrive just getting your people together because it just brings joy to your life. If you're looking to host a bigger gathering, maybe consider asking a friend if they would be willing to lend their house to you and you'll take care of the rest. Obviously, they would be invited, but maybe they just have more space or maybe they just feel more comfortable with having people over. This is a great alternative for when you're wanting to host that larger amount of people and you you might not have that space in your own home or feel quite comfortable hosting that amount of people. So definitely look outside of the box. Look for free venues to host. I mean, you could always pay for a venue, but I think that would hold us up even further. So maybe you and your friends have babies and kids and you want to have time at the park. Or even if not, there's some beautiful parks with amazing picnic tables and you can all just bring a side, bring, you know, a main dish and everybody can have like a potluck together. Doesn't have to be pressure filled, although we tend to make it because we tend to think that community has to always have this picturesque taking pictures, documenting what we're doing, but that's not community. In fact, that's counterfeit community. When we try to just bring people together to get pictures of what we're doing, to do it all for the name of the of the gram, let me tell you, just live life 
off of social media. And that is that is the truth about community, y'all. You need to get past what people are posting online and realize that community is fostered in your heart first and in your home second. Um, so we're going to he- head to lie number two. I used to believe this lie myself, but now I think I had a complete adverse reaction and now I'm the complete opposite. But we're going to dive into this lie that a lot of people tend to believe. Lie number two, you can only host on holidays or festive celebrations. There has to be something we're celebrating is what we tell ourselves. And when there's not, why get people together? I know... For my family growing up, we didn't have a huge family. It was just the five of us, our intermediate family, and then our Oma and Opa. So there was seven of us total whenever we'd get together. It's not that big of a family. Um, And we would just, it would just be us seven. And I think of when we would talk about our extended family and bigger family, like those gatherings didn't happen as often. Um... And it would only happen around a funeral or around some tragic situation. And it's a sad reality that a lot of families don't get together unless there's a quote-unquote reason to do so. But now, I am a huge believer that anything and everything deserves to be celebrated. And that is just a beautiful way to live. It brings so much more joy It's important to celebrate the small things and the big things. It shifts our perspective to focus on the joy that this life provides us with. Having a birthday? Celebrate it. Got an A on a test? Celebrate it. Got a new job? Get your nice outfit on and celebrate. These celebrations can be as simple as going out for dinner with friends or throwing a get-together at home. Maybe you have absolutely nothing to celebrate. Invite people over for a dinner or for a game night. Go out for coffee. Whatever is natural for you and your lifestyle. Invite others in on that. We so often feel like we have to create something that we're not to invite people in on. We feel like we have to host a party just to have people over. But the reality is, if you like playing games and you play games at night anyways invite someone over to play games. It's not as difficult or does not have to be as difficult as we set it out in our minds to be. You're planning on going to your community pool that night? Extend the invite to more than just you. Extend that invite to your friends and to your family and see what happens. Nobody has to come because you're already planning on doing it anyways or A lot of people can come and it can be a really fun time. So this is what I mean when I mean celebrate all the time. Celebrate life. This life deserves to be celebrated and now I feel like I have to celebrate everything. So just know that when you do jump over this lie, it can often just turn into, it can often turn into celebrating everything. And I honestly wouldn't change that for the world. I I love that about, I love that about me. No, I just really love to live this life and have fun and smile and have my people together. And it really just changes, changes the game, y'all. So lie number three, um, I still struggle with this. I'm still working through this, but I honestly feel like I've gotten a grip on what this looks like. Lie number three is that introverts can't host. Ooh. Yeah, if you're an introvert, you just cringed because you're like, I thought I had an escape out of hosting because of my personality. And (laughs) I would like to actually think that it's actually the opposite. I myself am a classified extroverted introvert. I love people, but if I don't have that alone time to recover and rejuvenate, I can become very depressed, very antisocial and shut off the rest of the world. I like, I love to laugh and be with people and have people over, but I really think it's that, that fills up my cup enough to be like, okay, I've had my people fill, but now I need my bath time or something to fill me up. Introverts thrive in their own space because that's what's comfortable for them. So what better way to host than have people in an environment where you're comfortable 
With every hosted gathering, I suggest scheduling some time to recoup. Like I was saying earlier, maybe that's a bath or maybe that's um, reading a book or maybe it's cleaning your space. I personally think that cleaning your space is just a task that we put off and then when we are stressed, we do it. Um, I wouldn't recommend cleaning, but sometimes that does help. Um, as an introvert, it can be really easy to get caught up into the serving aspect of the community time rather than spending time with the actual people because we hide ourselves behind that work or behind that responsibility so that we're more comfortable. Like it's our crutch. Like, let me put more food out. Let me fill up the drink canister. Does anybody need anything? Can I get you a drink? Are you comfortable? Is the AC too hot? Like all the questions that you could ask to fill in the space is what we do as introverts typically when hosting. And now when everyone's okay and everyone's there and you can just remember to be there, yes, you are the host, but being there is so much more important than your duties. Um, be intentional with your hostess hat and enjoy all the hard work that you've done. If it's, you know, an extravagant, extravagant event, um, let your guard down. It's okay to have people in your space. It's okay to have people over. And yes, does this mean that it might take some outside of ourself, like mindset? Like we might have to do this from a place of I'm, I'm doing this because I need it. Not because it's not because I'm trying to find the words there. Um, sometimes we need community even when we're an extrovert or an introvert and we refuse it because it seems like a lot of work, but let's put our guards down and truly enjoy that company, that community that God has blessed us with. Now I do have a bonus lie for you guys, um, that I thought of when writing this episode because I feel like this can hold up some people too. You have to do it all yourself, or at least that's what you keep telling yourself. You can ask for help. I want you right now to give your permission to yourself. Ooh, to give your permission to yourself. I can ask for help. I repeat it. I'm waiting. No, seriously. It's just so important to remember asking for help is not a sign of weakness or that you're a bad host. I actually think asking for help and utilizing people's talents can actually make you a quite excellent host because you know how to gather people and their resources to make an amazing time for community to gather. That in itself deserves a pat on the back, my friend. I'm serious. You don't have to do this life alone. And I hope that this series of some hosting truths and hosting tips will remind you that hosting does not have to be as daunting as we make it seem. Let's use this summer to be our practice round. Use this time to host without pressure. The holidays will come sooner than we think, and we're going to want to have people in our homes. So why not use this pressure-free time of the summer to just have friends over, have a, have a fire, roast some s'mores, um, enjoy that time together. This summer time is beautiful. It's a great time to be outside. Um, it's a great time to just spend quality time with the ones you love. So thank you so, so much for listening in to today's conversation. And I hope, hope, hope that it provided some helpful encouragement to combat the lies that surround hosting far too often. I know how easy it can be to give ourselves the boot before even trying something. Um, give, give yourself, give yourself a shot y'all. You guys are far more capable than you give yourselves credit for. And we can count ourselves out before we even count ourselves in. So I encourage you today to host one time this summer using these tips and maybe some of these techniques that you will learn through this mini series about hosting and make sure to tag me at to Bailey and beyond B-A-Y-L-E-E. -E, and I will be sharing those throughout the summer. 
And if you want more tips, recipes, anything like that, head over to baileyletters.com for all of that information and resources. There's some really fun stuff coming out this summer for you guys. So I will see you guys in the next episode, the final mini series episode. And yeah, until next time, you guys.